morning people welcome to i think it's the fifth lesson <laughs> of lockdown um, today we're going to talk about do a bit of revision for some of the older students and an actual lesson for the newer students who haven't done this before we're going to talk about light sources and how to define the three-dimensional shape of an object with shadows and highlights. Um, in that sense, we are creating the illusion of three-dimensionality on a flat surface, right? So let's talk light sources first. It depends on the shadows and light plays on your object, depends on the light source. If the light source comes from above and to the um, left of the object, most of the shadows will be on the right hand side of the object. If you draw a coffee mug, the shadow on the inside of the coffee mug will be on the left hand side though, because the light will strike it on the inside on the right hand side, as you can see there. And also the shadow that the object casts will be on the other side, the opposite side of the light source. Right. Same thing vice versa, if the light source comes from the right hand side, shadows on the inside of a hollow object will be on the right hand side, the light will strike it on that side. But all the other shadows on the object will be on the left hand side, as well as the shadow the object casts. Another thing, you can also get light sources from behind the object, from in front, from below to the right and below to the left. And that all changes where the shadows will go. Another thing to keep in mind with light sources are this. The harsher the light source, the more crisp and pronounced and dark the shadows will be, as you can see here. That includes the, sh the casted shadow, right. With a more subtle light source, all the shadows will be more subtle, including the cast shadow. Now, different types of light th sources, we're talking about fluorescent lights, LED lights, uh, midday light from the sun uh, when you're outside is really harsh but early morning and late afternoon sunlight will be more subtle right and then you get candlelight candlelight renders really interesting shadow and light plays on an object okay now today's lesson we're going to do we're going to practice the cross hatching method of shading right so let's first do a little um, value scale using cross hatching you're gonna do the normal six values right leave the top one white now hatching and cross hatching works like this for, for the students who haven't done this before the closer together the lines are, the darker the value looks. The further apart the lines are, the lighter the value looks. And with hatching and with cross hatching specifically, this example that I did just now is just hatching. With cross hatching, you cross different sets of lines, but you never cross them at right angles and you can put as many sets over each other, layer them as you want. You always cross at an angle. All right, so let's do cross hatching here. And if we want to make it really dark, we can do it again and maybe even again. And let's do the lighter value. You also press a bit harder for the darker lines and a bit softer on your pencil for the softer lines, the lighter lines. Right, let's go. 
leads to the first value. We're keeping the lines far apart for the lighter value. And we're doing cross hatching, so we're gonna do another layer. I think just one layer will do it. For the next, we're gonna keep bring the lines closer together. It's all an illusion actually. You have a bit of a darker valley. For the next one, the lines will be a little even more closer together, and we're starting to press a little bit harder on our pencils. Okay. More closer lines, bracing a bit harder. And I think here yeah, these two values seem very close to each other, right? So I'm going to add another, let's do it at a different angle, another layer, another set of lines, just to darken it a little bit. Right, for the last one we want a really dark value, so we press harder on the pencil and we basically make the lines on top of each other. And let's do another line. Just to make it really dark, and we really want to make it dark, we're going to add a fourth layer. Okay, that's how hatching and cross hatching works. So now we're going to draw the coffee mug that I sent you. And we are first going to do just the pure contour drawing. So for this bit, I'm going to fast forward a little, um, not to bore you and not to make the video too long. Right, so here goes. Okay, so there we have our basic pure contour drawing of the coffee mug. Okay, so now the first thing we check is where does the light source come from? In this case, the light source comes from the left. <coughs> so there's a very distinct shadow inside the cup on the left that tapers out a little. There's a very distinct highlight um, shadow on the right hand side of the mug that tapers out a little as the rub mug rounds yeah then there's a little bit of a shadow here on the handle of the mug and there is a core a little bit of a shadow right there tiny one and then there's a quite distinct shadow right there now notice that the right there there's a tiny little highlight okay I don't think we'll include that highlight now so let's get going okay and remember hatching and cross hatching so I'm gonna start here let me just get it makes kind of a line there right and the value inside the cup is really dark I'm gonna do this first bit for you before I start fast forwarding so here, don't make your lines too long. When you actually shade with hatching and cross hatching, you use tiny, almost like flicks of lines. All right. I 
think we can make it even more dark so let's do another set. Okay, and from about there, from about there, the shadow tapers off a little bit towards that side. So here I'm going to use just a few lines that's farther apart like that, just to show that it tapers off. Another thing is make your lines random. Don't make them all the same length. That also helps. Then I'm just gonna re-establish and reinforce this outline here. A little bit. Okay, I think that should do it. Let me just erase these. Good. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of the shading now and I'm going to fast forward here because I think you would get the idea by now. Alrighty, here goes. Okay, that's basically it. Hatching and cross hatching are, you can use it to create complete finished artworks. If I work a little more on this one, it will be a complete finished artwork, but mostly hatching and cross hatching are used to do quick value sketches um, because it's a quick way of shading without going into too much detail so there you have it we've practiced cross hatching today good see you next time take care guys bye